Today we're gonna be doing a Honkai Star Rail tier list for the four stars, man. Everyone's always focused on the five stars, but the four stars need some love too, man. So that's what we're gonna be getting into. I wanna put this disclaimer out there. This is gonna be information based on the final closed beta, so everything is subject to change. If characters get buffed, characters get nerfed, you know how those things happen at launch, but we're very close to launch, so there is a high possibility that this is gonna be what the characters are and what the little bit of tweaking. And then another disclaimer that I want to put out there is that I personally am not the biggest fan of tier list just because you know I think every character can be viable in a different team comp combined with a lot of these tier lists are coming out before the launch of the game where people get to like intensively do testing so a lot of it is speculation based so take my opinion with the grain of salt and any other content creators opinion this isn't the end all be all but I am a content creator so I do have to play the game and tier lists are what you guys like but this is going to be a great chance for us kind of communicate with each other and bounce ideas off each other so if you see a character ranked in a spot that you don't like make sure that you verbalize that in the comments down below and why so open it up we have ching k and i'm you already see it i'm just gonna put this right here i have i've read her skills like four times and i still have no fucking idea what she does and so we're just gonna put her there if you hey put me on game in the comments down below if she's good she's good if she's not then i'll save my time and not read her skills but i apologize this is gonna be the only character that you guys are gonna have to figure out yourself next up we have the fire main character and this is gonna be for the fire main character i have her or he he or she listed as an a tier unit because once we start getting to the end game content a tank is gonna be a must and in forgotten hall when we have to kind of divert into two different teams you're either gonna have to have a healer on each team or a tank on each team and i feel like the fire main character can serve that purpose as a tank for a second or a primary team with her kit you're gonna be able to taunt enemies so you're gonna be able to take a ton of damage and then we can see right here with the ult we're going to be able to deal out a massive amount of damage because your ult is going to scale off of your defense not just your attack so you can build this character extremely tanky and still be able to dish out that damage based on it scaling off a of defense and so that's why i have the fire main character rated as an a next up we have ting yoon and i have her slotted in the b tier and i'm going to try my best to not just sit here and read all these character skills i'll try and summarize so we can keep this video as short as possible and not have like a 50 minute video of me doing a deep dive she's of the harmony path so her kit is going to be focused on buffing our allies she's able to give one specific ally a decent attack percentage increase as well as she has this gimmick that is called a blessing whoever you target with her skill is going to get a blessing and when they attack they're going to do an additional set of lightning damage on top of their already whatever element they are attack and that's going to be for up to three different turns now where ting yoon can start to do some damage is with her talent or her passive ability and whichever character has the blessing ting yung is going to take 30 percent of their attack and so anytime she attacks a character she's going to have an additional 30 percent chunk of lightning damage of that blessed character's attack i know this is a little bit confusing but essentially she's going to be able to buff the attack of a character and also take some of that character's attack to add to her own damage so her kid's going to be more team player friendly and you're going to be able to combine her with the really strong single target dps for her to deal a decent bit of damage damage as well as buff that dps so i have her slotted in the b tier and our first s tier character one of two we have natasha i'm just gonna go ahead and drop her in there if you've made it to this point in the video i really would appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe to the channel liking it is going to allow us to get this out to as many new players as possible and help me build up my community for the launch of honkai star rail i would appreciate it so much but i'll get back to the video and stop with my interruption now natasha is one of those weird characters where she's going to be ranked high on a lot of people's tier lists solely based on the fact that we only have two healers at the launch of the game we're going to have natasha who's the only four star healer which you'll get for free and then you'll have bailu which is a five star which you may never get honestly with natasha's kit it just focuses all on healing and then once you get into the uh traces she's going to have a trace that allows her to remove a debuff from an ally this trace is going to be really important once you start to get to the end game content and getting a lot of debuffs stuck on you but i feel like this character is like an absolute must like you must invest in her you must level her up because i've as i mentioned it earlier with the fireman character you're gonna hit a point where you need two different teams natasha is gonna be carrying one of those teams with the heals and maybe as we get more four star healers in the future that's when we can start comparing her she may move lower on the list 
but as of now, since she's one of the only four stars with heals, that's why she gets one of the two slots in the S tier. Now we have Arlane, and I have him slotted in the C tier. I know that a lot of people may see him as like a maybe a D tier type of unit, and essentially his gimmick is is that when he attacks and deals damage, he's gonna sacrifice a chunk of his HP, but he's gonna be doing insane damage with those modifiers. And with his passive, he's gonna get a buff for every percent of HP he's missing, he's gonna deal up to 40% more damage. So he's gonna have a chance to be like an insane single target DPS, but he's gonna be toting that line of kind of managing your health to make sure that you're missing enough health to do the maximum amount of damage, but you're not so low in HP that you risk dying. Now with this unit, it's gonna be one of those weird things where even if you build a ton of HP on Arlane, it might not make as much of a difference just because a lot of his skills are percentage based. So to do a skill one, it's gonna take 15% of your max HP. It's not one of those things where it's like, oh, we're gonna take a thousand HP where it's set. And if you build more, it'll be less, which is kind of why I have him slotted a little low. I feel like he's one of the units that may come out and there may be a way better use case for him than we initially planned. Because if you look at his damage modifiers, we have his skill one, which is 160% of Arlane's attack. And then we have his ultimate, which is 210%. And if we drop out of here, he's only level four. His traces are level one. So as we level up these traces, that modifier is gonna increase even more. So we can see right here, if I leveled up his ultimate trace once, it's gonna jump from 210% to 224. And to kind of put that in perspective with how much damage he's doing, uh, this is going to be my Dan Hing, which is level 50 with the trace uh, level three. And we can see that with, he's gonna be a big single target DPS that we'll get into later. But we can see that at level three, his ult is doing 272% and his single target skill is doing 169%. So 169% on your skill one at level four compared to Arlane, who's doing 160 at just level one. So level four, Dan Hing, 169%, Arlane level one, 160. So you can already see that we're kind of cutting it very close in terms of the damage even at just level one. So I think this might be a slept on unit that'll probably move up higher as people learn how to play them. Next up, we have Pela, and this is, I have her listed as a C tier, and I am gonna be putting these in order. So obviously I think our lane is gonna be better than Pela. And so I'm gonna try and put them in order for you guys to have. Now with Pela, she's gonna be able to remove one buff from the enemy and deal single target ice damage. Her ultimate is gonna be AOE ice damage, and she's gonna be able to reduce the enemy's defense for two turns. And then her passive, she's just gonna regenerate energy. I think Pela may be like a very niche character that she may come in handy when we get to some of the further simulated universes. So that way we maybe can be removing some of the attack buffs that the units are gonna get combined with lowering their defense so we can dish out more damage. And you know, I don't like, I don't, this this is a back, I don't like Pela right here. I'm gonna put her at B because I do think she's gonna have a use case in the future. And I think this lowering the defense as well as removing a buff from an enemy will have a use case. I just don't know what it will be just yet because from reading all the kits i think she's the only unit I'm, I, I feel weird saying these blanket statements but from reading all the four stars for a fact she's one of the only units going to be able to remove a buff from an enemy i think it just needs to be experimented with how significant this damage or this defense reduction is going to be actually you know what i'm going to just put her back in c tier but i'm going to put her in front of arlon arlene i keep wanting to call this man arlong <laughs> from one piece but actually i'm, I'm comfortable with this I feel like once we get that use case in the future, then I can see her being moved up. Now we have Asta. Now Asta is gonna be one of the free to play characters, which you're gonna get. And I have her ranked really high. I have her listed in A tier. Asta honestly was one of my favorite units during the closed beta, because if any of you guys have played Final Fantasy or Kingdom Hearts, you know Haste, you know Hastega, and you know how significant those are in turn-based games. I hope that I said Hastega, Hastega. <laughs> Don't roast me, but you know how significant those are in turn-based games. And essentially that's what she's gonna have with her ultimate right here. She's gonna be increasing the speed of all allies for two turns with her ultimate. And she's also gonna be able to give a significant attack buff to all of our units. So here we have her skill one. She's gonna attack a single enemy. And then with four bombardments, you're gonna be able to deal damage to a random enemy. But for each random enemy that you hit, you're gonna gain a stack. And so now if we jump over here to her passive, we can see that for every stack she builds, 
up to five, you're gonna be able to give your allies a damage percent increase. So we can see that right here, my asset at level five is gonna be able to give all allies a 35% attack increase if I can get five stacks. And with her skill, maxing out stacks is gonna be pretty easy. But the con is, is that she's gonna be reducing stacks at the beginning of every turn. So I think that Ass is an amazing support character. She's gonna be able to increase the speed and give you that attack percentage increase. And on top of that, with this skill, it's gonna be an AOE skill. So if your enemy has fire weaknesses, you're gonna be able to hit multiple at once. And that's why I have her listed at A. Next up, we have Dan Heng, and he's gonna be big single target damage. I have him slotted in the A tier. He is gonna be one of the characters you get for free, and he's gonna be dealing tons of damage. And then if you get a crit, you're gonna be able to reduce your enemy speed. We can see that he does have pretty high damage modifiers. And if you are able to proc that speed reduction on your enemy or combine him with any character that can slow the enemies, he's gonna get an additional damage modifier of 81% when attacking a slowed enemy. And then on top of that, if we go to his passive, if any of our allies target him with an ability, he's gonna be able to get wind resistance penetration. And so we mentioned Ten Yung a little bit earlier where she can increase, you know, an ally's attack power or even March 7th who can put a shield on an enemy. It probably wouldn't make sense with uh, Dan Hing. It'll probably make more sense with Ten Yung. But if we were to use her ability to give him the attack buff, that's gonna trigger his passive, which is going to allow him to do even more damage because he's gonna get that res pin. And so of the four stars, Dan Hing is one of only two units that are the hunt path. And so you're not gonna go wrong if you just invest in him and use him as your big single target damage DPS until you get a five star that can do it. Or if you just enjoy him as a unit, he's gonna be a very solid choice to be that single target DPS. Big damage, big damage, big damage. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. We're just gonna act like I didn't and move on to the next unit which is gonna be Serval. So I have Serval placed in the B tier and I'm just gonna go ahead and place this unit as well. Other we have Herta. I have her listed in the D tier and I will get into that in a second. I feel like these characters are very similar except for Serval is the better version of this type of unit. The only difference is, is that Herta is gonna be uh, ice based and Serval is lightning. So if you're trying to hit maybe an ice weakness, I can see why you would take Herta. But Serval just does, she's the uh, erudition path and so is Herta. And so they're both gonna focus on AOE damage. I just feel like, like I keep saying, Serval does this role better. So if we get into her skills, she's gonna deal lightning damage to a single enemy, and she's also gonna have splash damage to the units to the left and the right. Now, each enemy that is hit by this, so it will be three max, has an 80% chance to be shocked for two turns. This shock is gonna cause dot damage, but there's also some synergy that goes in with her, I believe her talent. After Serval attack, she's gonna be able to deal an additional 40% chunk of damage to all shocked enemies and then we move into her ult which is aoe damage and it's going to extend the shock of enemies by two turns so we can see that this entire kit has a lot of synergy with this shock and dealing that tick damage and also being able to deal an additional chunk to anybody that is shocked now if we move to herda as i mentioned she is ice based her first skill one just aoe damage and it has a modifier if they're above 50 percent we get into her ult just aoe damage and we get into her passive, where if an enemy drops below 50%, Herta's gonna jump in and do a follow-up attack. Now, I don't think Herta is useless. I just think in in-game content, it's not gonna be as viable with this follow-up because we're gonna be focusing on single target bosses as opposed to AOE. But I can see Herta being like a very essential piece in a team that's focused on AOE farming or yeah, mainly AOE farming and quick clearing. And so based on these two units, like I said, they have very similar kits, just different elements. And I think Serval does it better in terms of uh, usability when it comes to the in-game content. Next up, we have March 7th and I have her slotted in the B tier right behind Ting Yoon. And so with her kit, she's gonna be able to put a shield on an ally. And if they're above 30%, that ally is gonna have a significant higher chance of being attacked. And her shield is gonna scale off of defense. So for those of you that aren't familiar, there's a unit named Clara, who's a five-star unit, uh, this unit right here, and her kit revolves around being attacked. If Clara is attacked, she's gonna jump in, Sarvog is gonna do a counter and dish out damage even when it's not her turn. But one of her problems is, is that she needs to find a way to be attacked. So I think pairing her with March 7th is a good combo because they kind of complement one another. But the reason I have March 7th ranked a little bit lower is that the rest of her kit scales off of attack. So we can see that her ult is gonna deal AOE damage to everyone based off of her attack and has a 50% chance to freeze enemies. 
and then her passive is going to allow her to deal uh, counter damage after an enemy that is shielded is attacked, and that damage is also going to scale off for attack. So basically, if you want the shield to be bigger, you're going to have to build defense on March 7th, but all of her damage dealing options kind of scale off of her attack. So it's really a weird combination, but I think if she's combined with Clara, this could be a very strong wombo combo. And I think that we may get units in the future that March 7 will synergize with. It's just when we start discussing kind of some of the end game content, you're going to be running a healer or a tank on each team. And I feel like March 7th doesn't really serve the tank option as well as she needs to to be the solo tank of a team and i mean you can continue just to put your shield on yourself to make units attack you but i just think when you have options like the fireman character to run as a tank which is going to be able to scale and do damage based off of your defense i just feel like that's the better option than march 7th would be i don't think she's trash and have her in d i just have her slotted kind of right here in the middle in the b tier next up we have hook and i have her slotted at i'm not sure if this is a little boy or a little girl but i have hook slotted at the top of the c tier i feel like hook is gonna go crazy when it comes to a dot damage team we're gonna discuss sample a little bit later someone's gonna figure out a way to do a dot damage team if they haven't already and it's gonna be insanely strong but essentially hook is gonna be able to do damage to a person as well as inflict a burn which is gonna deal burn dot damage and then her passive her his i'm just gonna say her because I, I don't remember i think the voice was squeaky during the game but her passive is going to allow her to deal additional damage to anyone that is afflicted with burn and she's going to be able to regenerate energy as well and then her ult is going to be massive single target to one unit but it's also going to enhance your next skill which is going to allow this skill to be able to target multiple people instead of just one so with this you're going to be able to get a chance to put that burn effect on up to three enemies at once instead of it just being solo and next up, just because we brought it up, just like the uh, burn damage team, I have Sampo. I have him slotted. I have him slotted after Herda, but I'm going to move him before Herda because I feel like while Sampo may feel like he doesn't have a use case just yet, his kit is set up for him to be the all-star, like the all-star of a dot damage team. So we have his skill one, which is just going to be single target damage. It's really low damage modifier, but the dagger that he throws is going to be able to bounce to several enemies up to four times, dealing wind damage. We get into his ultimate, which is going to be AOE wind damage, but this also is going to have a hundred. 100% chance to increase the target's dot damage by 21%. So we can see combining Sampo with characters like Hook, characters like Serval who has the shock that does dot, Hook has the, Hook has the burn, and I feel like there's a five, so I think Himiko, I don't remember her full kit, but we see that if we pair these up with the right units, someone is gonna figure this out, and I wanna see it because I have a feeling it's gonna be a very cool team to play, but it will be very gimmicky. But let's get back on track. Sampo's passive is going to allow him a 65% chance to inflict a wind shear for three turns and this is just going to be the winds version of dot damage but with this it can stack up to five different times and it's going to deal 26 percent of sampo's attack at the beginning of each turn so i do have sampo slotted a little low but there's just one unit or someone to do the math and figure it out they can maybe move him up to the b tier but for now i have him low in d next up we have shu shang and honestly she's probably the all-star of all of the four stars man like if you get her you are very lucky and please invest i have her listed as the strongest four star because when it comes to single target damage dealers at four stars all we have is shu shang and dan hing but if we look at shu shang's modifiers and just the abilities that she has she's going to be doing crazy damage making her one of the best dps in the games especially when it comes to the four stars so this guy don't be confused this guy shu shang is level 70 and yoked up we see it's level eight but essentially she's going to deal a massive amount of physical damage to one enemy in addition to that she's going to have a 33 percent chance to trigger something called sword stance and now this is going to deal 87 percent more damage to that enemy and if the enemy is broken you're going to have a guaranteed chance to hit this sword stance so we're already doing massive single target damage and on top of that we're going to have this extra modifier that is almost as much single target damage as some people's main skill like this is pretty insane when it comes to damage and then it gets even better wait there's more <laughs> when we get to her ultimate she's gonna be doing insane amounts of single target damage like i said this guy's su shang is yoked up but 288 percent of her attack to a single enemy 
and immediately after, you get to advance your turn to go next. So you're doing your ult, then boom, you are going again where you can pop off with a regular attack or a skill one. And on top of all of that, bro, Xu Sheng's attack is gonna be increased by a decent percentage and her skill is gonna have two additional chances to trigger short stance. So with the skill regularly, you only get one chance. But you pop this ultimate, you're gonna be dealing with this unit right here, level eight, 288% of Xu Sheng's attack. Then you get to attack next and you're gonna have a 20% attack buff, which will allow you to do this skill again and then you're gonna have two extra chances to proc that sword stance to deal an additional 87% of Xu Shang's attack as damage. I'm getting excited talking about this. <laughs> oh my God, this like, I feel like something has to be wrong because as I read this, I didn't get a chance to pull her, but these numbers are insane. And I know that Jing Yung, this five star right here in his feature banner, Xu Shang is gonna be one of the feature four star units that you can get. And likely he'll be the second character exclusive banner that you can pull on. So your chances of getting Xu Shang is gonna be pretty high early on because she's gonna be a rate up in one of the first few character rate up banners. So I feel like I've just talked for an eternity and I'm already losing my voice. So I'll wrap this up. If you wanna hear my thoughts on the five star units, I'll have a link to a previous video I did right here. It's not in tier list formatting. I just discussed the units that I liked, but let me know in the comments down below if you want me to do a tier list deep dive with the five stars like we did this one. Before you leave, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and like the video, but now I release you to check out the video that I have linked for you.